A human zoo is precisely what it sounds like. Even though they were once called ethnological expositions to make them seem more acceptable, they were still awful public displays of human beings. Popular during the 19th and early 20th centuries, the zoos were advertised in connection with a growing interest in other cultures. However, the interest likely wasn't educational, but instead it was more about showing the superiority of Western society over the so-called uncivilized world. Human zoo exhibits were cruel, abusive, and exploitative. Most people in zoo exhibits received no money and no social help, and many ended up buried in unmarked graves once they died. It's also worth noting that human zoos were a completely different phenomenon from freak shows. Freak shows were mostly an American invention, where people with biological rarities were either exhibited or performed acts. Conjoined twins, obese or albino people, and even the bearded lady were often part of a human exposition, such as P.T. Barnum's American Museum. While the exploitative angle of freak shows might have looked very similar to that of human zoos, some freak shows paid their participants well, giving some a livelihood they otherwise would not have had. For example, conjoined twins Chang and Ang retired from working at freak shows at the age of 29 with an impressive $60,000 fortune. Adjusted for inflation, that's the equivalent of around $1.3 million in today's money. Those exhibited in human zoos got no such courtesies. By the second half of the 19th century, human zoos were popular in all major European capitals. According to Ferris State University, exhibits regularly attracted hundreds of thousands of visitors, with some attracting as many as one million visitors. In Germany, wild animal merchant Karl Hagenbeck organized a Nubian exhibit that toured Europe, featuring people and animals from the Egyptian sedan. Over 28 million people visited the 1889 Paris World's Fair, which displayed hundreds of indigenous people from various French colonies. At the time, this was the largest human zoo ever set up anywhere. Exhibits were divided into small areas in which people lived, slept, and worked, demonstrating the difference in the way of living between the so-called civilized and the savage. As with many human zoos, the exhibits were staged to entertain rather than to educate visitors, as many of the representations weren't authentic. Human zoo exhibits continued well into the following century. The two colonial exhibitions were organized in Marseille in 1906 and 1922. They displayed semi-nude humans in cages, while the large expeditions in Paris offered performances by natives from the French colonies. By the time one closed after six months, it had attracted 34 million visitors. Although Europe was famous for its human zoos, the idea eventually made its way into the United States in 1904. That's when the massive 1,200-acre St. Louis World's Fair opened and featured not only scientific and trade expositions, but also a number of so-called living exhibits. The largest one was the Philippine Exposition, which housed over a thousand Filipinos from different tribes and had over 130 buildings. Within the Filipino exhibit, the Igorot village attracted the most visitors. Advertised as the least civilized of all the villages, it featured semi-nude natives that were offered dogs to cook and eat daily. They were also made to perform ceremonies and dance for the entertainment to the visitors. The St. Louis World's Fair also offered other so-called native habitats to visitors, where Native Americans, Ainu people from Japan, and more performed and posed for photographs. One of the most heartbreaking stories of the fair is the one of a Congolese man named Oda Banga. Oda was exhibited at the fair as a cannibal because of his teeth, which had been traditionally filed into sharp points when he was a child. After the fair ended, he was taken to the Bronx Zoo, where he was kept in a cage with apes and displayed as a, quote, savage pygmy. After being released, he tried to adapt to his surroundings by working in a tobacco factory and wearing Western clothing. Sadly, Oda shot himself in the heart in 1916 and was buried in an unmarked grave in a Virginia cemetery. By the mid-20th century, human zoos fell out of favor with the advent of movies, which satisfied the public's curiosity for foreign lands and populations. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more messed up history videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.